Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. Um, today, we're going to be talking about pathways from a community college to a four-year state university. Many of our students begin their education after high school at a community college. There's so many um, different pathways you can take. There's so many options at the community college. And I am very excited because you won't get to listen to my voice today very much. We have a guest speaker, a very special guest speaker today from Sierra College. Mr. Alistair Turner is an enrollment specialist, sometimes called an outreach specialist. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and so that I can let him share his screen. And uh, Alistair, welcome. These are Sequoia Grove High School students. We have three charter high schools, Clarksville Charter, Feather River Charter and Lakeview Charter. And so we're happy to have you join us today. Thank you. So hopefully you can see um, my PowerPoint presentation all about transfer pathways from a community college. So um, that should be um, what we're all here to, to learn about today. Um, I know the chat feature is, is in operation, I believe. So uh, if you have questions um, while I'm going along, please feel free to put them in the chat um, or raise your, oh, Ethan. It seems like you have a question already. I haven't even started. <laughs> Go for it, mate. Uh, sorry, but um, speaking of Sierra College, I you I am on the Wolverines team in swimming. So um, I used to swim. Well, I I used to swim there, but we went to a different pool. So okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of sports and I, I'm I'm not really going to talk too much about our sports today, but yes, yeah, as a community college, and this is true for any community college, they often have sports opportunities for students and Sierra College is no different with all the wonderful sports programs. Uh, maybe I'll come back sometime um, and talk to you a little bit more about sports at Sierra College, but we'd be happy to do that as well. We would love that. And Alistair, I have the chat feature so that students can chat directly with me. So ask your questions in the chat and I'll forward them to you. Um, at a point later on, Alistair, is that okay? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You'll do it that way um, if that works better. And then obviously, and I'll leave some time at the end, guys. So if you've got um, questions, I'll certainly leave some time at the end as, 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 you know, for any sort of like follow up or anything that I talked about today. Um, also, I have shared um, my presentation as well. And obviously, I believe it's being recorded. So all the links and everything else you'll be able to access. So you won't need to, um, you know, make some sort of like screenshots and things like that. So firstly, um, I'm excited to be here today. I'm obviously from Sierra College, but you're very fortunate in this region that you have multiple community colleges that you can choose from. Um, and I'm gonna talk specifically today about transfer pathways from a community college to a four year, primarily to um, the UC or the CSU system. But that doesn't mean we don't have students and that go on to private schools or out of state schools, but um, just for the purposes of today, mainly focus on the four year pathway within the UC and the CSU system. So before I start chatting away too much, let's look at what that looks like in terms of campuses, locations. Um, so, and you may already be aware of a lot of this information, but the, the map on the left there, that's the, um, the CSU campuses, 23, um, that you have to choose from. The map in the middle is the UC undergraduate um, system so there's nine campuses that you can choose from and then that funny multicolored map on the right hand side that is actually all the community colleges in california and um, so we're an extensive system um, they keep adding community colleges all the time but the last time i looked it was 116 community colleges within california educating nearly two million students and the reason i mention that is not just obviously those numbers you know sound impressive but also to talk to you about how many community college students there are and how popular this pathway is through to the four year to the UCs, the University of California, or the CSUs, the California State University Systems. And I'm going to talk obviously about that pathway today. Also, for ourselves, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Sierra College's experiences because that's what I know best as a as a community college employee from Sierra, but this is true for, for, for most community colleges. About 60 to 70% of the students that apply to Sierra College, when they do their application, indicate that they either wanna get an associate's degree, which is a two-year degree, and or transfer to a four-year system. So there's a lot of interest in using community college as a way to get into that four-year system. Okay, so why should you consider transfer? Well, firstly, any student, any student should consider it. It is really a nice option. As you may already be aware, community college is very affordable. So it provides an affordable option um, to education. As I mentioned already, 
the CSU system and the UC system welcome transfer. Um, part of their remit is to accept transfer students from community colleges like Sierra. So that pathway is built in, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what that pathway looks like today. But they, 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 they're designed to accept transfer students from community colleges. If you're a student and you're undecided on your academic goal, maybe attending a community college first might make sense. Do some general classes, and um, it mentions on this slide as well, academic preparation, career exploration, and finding out what you want to major in, where you want to go. And then finally, maybe it's a second chance. Maybe you decided and tried to apply to go to a four year straight out of high school, aren't successful. You can still um, then use a community college as that option. I kind of shy away from the word second chance because community colleges for me, for many students, it's your first chance. It's a wonderful way of getting in to, to the UC or the CSU system for all the reasons that I've already mentioned on this slide. So a lot of people know about the fact that community colleges are less expensive. So you can see one of the points up there is the affordability. And yes, we are. For many students, we're actually tuition free. And um, even if you had to pay full tuition, you'd be paying about $1,500 a year. That's a fraction of what you pay, say, for a CSU. That's Their tuition is around about seven, dollars 8000 a year. For a UC, it's about 14000 a year. The reason I mention the cost, though, is because sometimes students think, just because it's less expensive to go to a community college, that for some reason it might not be as good an education. That's absolutely not true. That's because at a community college, you'll be doing in the first two years exactly the same classes that a student would be if they went straight to a four year in terms of your transfer requirements. So you're getting just as good an education by attending a community college first. And the only difference um, is that you're just paying less for it. And of course, the location. Community colleges are going to be more local to yourself, probably, and um, particularly in this region. Um, you've got so many to choose from, not just obviously um, Sierra College, where I'm from, but you've got Folsom Lake, Sacramento City, American River. And um, further north, you've got Yuba. Further south, you've got Delta. So you've got all sorts of um, options and choices when it comes to finding a community college that's close by to you and providing you um, with that option of transferring into the four year. OK, so how does transfer work? Well, primarily, there's sort of like four things to be aware of. Um, one is it's an option for you to complete general education. And you'll hear me today talk quite a little bit about GE. And what that means is general education. And a four-year degree has these general education requirements, and they can be completed at a community college. And um, that abbreviation there, CCC, which just means California Community College. Um, so that's an option that you can do within your first two years. Also, and this is important to note, you will have to do classes within your major to prepare you for transfer. So it's not just general education. Sometimes students think, I'm just going to come to a community college and get all my GEs, as, as, as they sort of the phrase is used, out the way. That's fine, but also you need to do some classes within your major as well, and whatever that major may be. Also, there are going to be certain um, transfer requirements, minimum requirements, eligibility requirements, and I'm going to talk about some of those general requirements um, today. And then finally, unsurprising, some campuses, when it comes to transfer, are more selective in their admissions process than others. So what does that mean? Well, not just for the campus themselves, but also depending on the major that you've decided to choose. Um, I'm a history major, and that was the subject that I studied um, for my bachelor's degree. And it it pains me to say this, but it's easier to get into a university in history than it is many other subjects like engineering, computer science. They're going to have higher requirements just because of the demand for those classes and those majors because they you know they're highly sought after and you know provide lots of career opportunities. So that's something else to be aware of. Not all the transfer requirements are going to be the same. OK, so what does that look like? Well, particularly for the CSU and the UC system, you're primarily going to be transferring as an upper division transfer with 60 units. So what does upper division mean? It basically means that you do your first two years, your lower di division requirements at a community college, your first 60 units at a community college, and then you would transfer to the UC or CSU system. One of the questions I often get asked um, is, well, what happens if I wanted to transfer before that? If I didn't want to spend two years, I wanted to transfer in my first, second, you know, first year or something like that. 
typically, and this is true um, prim primarily for the CSU system, most campuses will either restrict or prohibit admission to lower division. They'll want you to earn the 60 units at a community college. Um, the UCs, some of them may allow you um, limited transfer options for students below the 60, but the general rule and in the the, the sort of the prime thing to be aware of is that you're going to need to get to that 60 and um, before you can transfer to um, the four year and looking at those minimum GPA requirements uh, they are very you know that's just that that's the minimum requirement but often it's going to be much higher and I'll talk a little bit more about what your GP GPA needs to be um, to be transfer eligible so those are the minimum requirements that they publish on the CSU and the UC side but often needs to be a lot higher you know 2.8 3.2 3.5 depending on the school depending on the major that you're interested in in pursuing and then of course as I mentioned already while you're at a community college you're completing your general education requirements and your major prep requirements and so you're basically doing the first two years of a four-year degree at a community college Hopefully I'm making sense so far and I haven't lost anybody with the accent because I didn't even mention that I do have a slight accent as you might have picked up and um, this afternoon. Your ears are not deceiving you. I am originally from England. And I usually mention that right at the beginning of the presentation, just so people don't worry <laughs> and start thinking, where's he from? And then I do wonder, did they actually listen to anything I said or did they spend the whole time um, trying to work out where's my accent from? Anyway, so I'm from England, so I should have probably given that a heads up right at the beginning. Anyway, so that's the transfer requirements. Um, for the CSU UC system. Okay. Now, something you can do at a community college is something called an associate degree for transfer. That's called an ADT, and you may start hearing about that. Those are degrees that are primarily allowing you to, within that major, move into the CSU system, the 23 campuses of the CSU system. On the screen in front of you right now, I'm just showing you the 30 majors that we offer for transfer at Sierra College. But there are all sorts of options. And when you've decided on which community college you want to go to, you'll be able to start researching what transfer degrees they offer at, at that particular community college. And talking about that, actually, on the next slide, and I'll share all these links at the end, this is actually something that you can go into and actually look and go, OK, I, I can start researching like transfer degrees at different community colleges. And also, you're going to work very closely with a community college counsellor to map your pathway. This is not a situation where you do this on your own. There's a lot of support and guidance at the community college level with counselors, making sure that you're, you know, getting the right support and guidance for the pathway that you want to, that you want to follow. And so this is a great website. This is a, this is a general website from the community college system and um, within California, allowing you to do that research on the different associate degrees that are offered. Um, and as I said, these degrees are primarily for students looking to go into the CSU system. So schools like Sacramento State, Chico State, um, San Jose, San Francisco State, schools of that nature. I also wanted to touch on tags. That's something else that students often hear about. Tags are for the UC system. This is something that you can take advantage of by going to a community college. Now, there are nine UCs um, within California that offer undergraduate and um, bachelor's degrees. Um, and as you can see on this slide, I'm only showing you six. Those are the six that have those TAG programs with community colleges. So the three that are missing are UCLA, UC Berkeley, and UC San Diego. Now, it doesn't mean you can't go to a community college and transfer to those schools. They just don't often the offer the guaranteed pathway. As you can appreciate and may already be aware, they're highly selective and highly impacted. I believe you've had a UCLA rep that's already come and spoken to you and maybe some of you listened to, to, to their um, guidance. So they're obviously fabulous schools. You can certainly go to community colleges. We've had students that have gone to Sierra and transferred to UC Berkeley uh, and UCLA, but um, they don't offer those guaranteed TAG programs. Um, but these are the six that do. And I just want to talk a little bit about what the TAG agreements are because that's often a very popular question that I get from students. I've heard about these tags. What does it mean? How do I do that? Um, and obviously, as you can see on the slide, TAG stands for Transfer Admission Guarantee. And these are for the, for the UC schools, the six UC schools that offer this program. So how can you write a TAG? Well, as you can see from this slide at the top, talked about the six campuses, um, you need to first complete 30 transferable units. So you can't attend a community college right off the bat and say, oh, 
fantastic. I heard this presentation from Alistair. He said something about tag. I want to sit down and write my tag. You do need to complete 30 units first before you can write the tag. And the reason for that is you write it for a specific following year. So basically, we're hoping within that first year, you complete 30 units. Um, to do that means you need to be taking about 15 units a semester, um, which is about five classes. Some students take 12, but maybe have dual enrollment credit or have APs, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but you complete those 30 units, and then you can write the tag, and you can write it with one school. Um, so you may see on that list um, that I showed on the previous slide, there's obviously six schools. Obviously, you can write a tag with one of them. It doesn't prohibit you from applying to another school on that list or other schools like UC Berkeley, UCLA, but you can only write one tag. They don't let you do that with more than one school. And then, so say we have students this year that were writing their tags that had attended Sierra for one year. We had students this year writing their tags um, last month in September. Um, they finished their 30 units. They then need to complete their 60 units by next spring, spring 2024, to be prior to being eligible to, to tag into the fall of 2024. Um, in terms of the support that we provide them, obviously we have there's lots of counsellors um, providing that support. There's a website, and I'll talk a little bit about this website. It's called assist.org. It shows students um, the types of classes they need to take for their major prep. Uh, it should be used in conjunction with um, support from a counsellor. As you can see, um, the other slide um, showing you fall 2024, so students wanting to write a tag needed to have done it by the end of last year. Um, end of last month, September the 30th. Um, and also, what does the GPA need to be? Obviously, something that lots of students are interested in. What does my GPA need to be? Um, it's going to vary on the UC that you apply to and also um, the major. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. And then finally, there's something called a transfer admission plan, or it's called TAP. It's something that our counsellors will actually encourage incoming students that are interested in the TAG to set up. You can set up this planner even before you do the tag and start putting in the classes that you're planning to take and making sure that it meets the different requirements for the different schools. And the other thing, and it's not actually mentioned on this slide, once you've written and done your tag and submitted that, you then still need to apply to the UC system and still do a regular application to you know multiple UCs or just the one that you tagged with, you still need to do that UC application as well. And then what I will show you on the next slide is obviously GPA requirements, because that's something and it does vary depending on degrees uh, and, and locations. So, for example, um, last year, I think UC uh, Santa Cruz, it was about 3.0 for all their majors. UC Irvine was higher. It was 3.4. And then obviously UC Davis, which is a very popular school for art students at Sierra College. Um, it was around about a 3.2 in general. But obviously, as I discussed earlier, engineering um, was actually higher. It was a 3.5. Also, something else to be aware of, when you tag with a, a particular school, with a particular UC, often you can tag for a variety of different majors. But sometimes, and this changes every year, certain UCs will exclude certain very impacted majors. So, for example, UC Davis um, has a computer science program, but students can't tag with that program because of how impacted it is. So you can tag with most of the majors at UC Davis, but there are a couple of exceptions. And obviously, um, we're getting into the weeds a little bit on this, but of course, our community college counselors would assist with that support and guidance. Okay, guys, I'll take a breath because obviously that was a ton of information. I don't know if there's questions coming in, um, Ms. Burr, or if you, if you, I'm happy to continue. I just want to make sure that I'm not missing any points or, or confusing students, which is also highly likely. Yeah, no, I don't think you're confusing anybody. There's no questions that have come in uh, yet specifically to you, but I just wanted to emphasize and, and I guess ask, tag is guarantee. So if the students... I mean, if the major is not impacted and if the students do the coursework that is laid out for them in the planner, they're guaranteed admission. That's right. That's exactly right. So what that means, to go back to those tag requirements, if you meet those requirements and you meet those minimum GPAs or whatever that may be, they're saving you a spot. So students that were doing the tag, you know, last month were being saved a spot for next fall of 2024 and absolutely guaranteed. So they're being told, yep, you've been accepted and they Typically, what happens is in November, the, the school that you've tagged with will let you know, yep, everything's fine, you're in, just need to make sure you complete those 60 units uh, and all that. But yeah, that's what's really nice about that program is that guaranteed pathway. 
And it still doesn't mean, and the other thing to, to bear in mind, and I, I didn't mention it, so I thank you for, for talking about the guaranteed part. Students can do the one tag. So say we have students that will do a tag with UC Davis, but also independently, they'll apply directly to UC Berkeley. Say they get accepted at UC Berkeley, they don't then have to go do, they don't have to accept their place that they've already got guaranteed at UC Davis. So it's kind of a win-win. You've got that tag that's giving you that guarantee if you maintain your minimum GPA, but then you can still apply to other UCs, you know, like UC Berkeley. You get in there and you want to accept that spot. Absolutely do that. Um, similar to seniors uh, is how I look at it now. So seniors in high school may apply to multiple schools and, and, and universities. Our transfer students do the same. They may do a tag. They may apply to other schools as well. So you know, increasing their options and the tag doesn't commit you. So that's the important thing. It's committing the, the school. So it's a win for the students. It's committing the school um, to offer the space, but it's not committing the student. It's just giving them an, an additional option. Yeah, good question. Okay, so um, we talked a little bit about this um, and you'll hear this um, more and more, particularly seniors and, and when you're working with um, community college counselors, things like impacted majors, selective majors, what does that mean? It basically means they have a, a lower average admit rate than the general admission to a particular CSU or UC and therefore are gonna be more competitive. And as you can see from this slide, they will have higher GPA requirements. So going back to myself as a history major, transferring in history, it's going to require me to have a lower GPA than if I'm transferring in engineering, if I'm transferring in computer science, something of that nature. Okay, guys, so moving on. So advice for high school students, and this is things that I I, I hear all the time. I hear our counselors talking about things that you may have already been told already. Um, but if you haven't, um, consider taking dual enrollment classes while you're in high school. Um, I know Sequoia Grove um, has a number of students that do take advantage of that at Sierra. So I'm assuming that's something that um, students, you know, do at Folsom Lake and American River and other local community colleges. It's a great way to get a start on your college career, get you thinking about yourself as a college student, and also start working towards those 60, um, those 60 units that you need to be eligible to transfer. Um, also, many community colleges like Sierra offer a lot of their classes online, so there's no longer that same requirement to maybe have to travel to the campus, uh, and you can easily you know, complete a number of units. Um, also research options. Um, and obviously it's great that so many of you have decided to spend your Friday afternoon here listening to this. And this is a great ex example of, you know, you know, finding out what some of the requirements need to be. Um, and obviously each community college is a little bit different in terms of the programs that they can offer. So yes, there's a lot of general education classes that you can take at a community college. And yes, they're gonna meet the requirements to different UCs and CSUs, but also you're gonna need to do some major prep. You're gonna need to, and when I say major prep, that means classes that support your major for transfer. So you need to make sure when you're researching community colleges that the school you're going to can provide you with that. Or if they can't, that there's a local school that you could maybe pick up the odd class or two that isn't providing it at the community college that you're taking most of your classes. A through G. So I know I don't probably have to tell any high school student, this is something that you probably hear a lot about for completing the A through G requirements for four year eligibility. Now that's not required to attend a community college. You don't need to have done the A through G. You don't even need to have a particular minimum GPA. So obviously that's one of the things I love about community colleges is we're open access and we provide that support and guidance and we'll help you wherever you are within you know, your educational journey and, and get you to a point. But if you're particularly interested in transferring in two years, if that's a goal, you're probably going to need to have done your A through G before you come to community college, even though you don't need it. It's only going to support you and help you in that goal. Aware of dates and deadlines is another just important thing, not just enrollment dates to, to get to a community college and registration dates and things like that, but also those transfer dates. When do I have to do my tag? When do I have to do my transfer application, my UC, my CSU application? And just be aware of, of those dates and deadlines. And then being a full-time student, and, and the reason I mention that is obviously right now, everybody on this, on this, um, this Zoom call is obviously, you know, you're just studying full-time make sure you continue that into college. And for us at a community college, full-time is 12 units. Now, the reason I mentioned 12 units is because 
you know, previously I talked about 60 units required for transfer. So to get to those 60 units, if you're only taking 12 units a semester and you're with us for like four semesters, um, that's only going to be 48 units. So how are you going to get to that 60? Are you going to come in with dual enrollment credits? Are you going to take classes in the summer? Um, are you going to take summer classes? Are you going to be with us longer than two years? And and two years isn't the, 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 the limit. You don't have to transfer in two years. Often we'll have students that maybe take three years to get to that to that 60. But these are all things that you need to be thinking about. And then finally, just because I'm talking to a, a group of high school students, always make sure to do your financial aid application when you're coming in, whether you're coming to Sierra or a community college or you go into a four year, make sure to complete that because there's lots of scholarships, grants, there's tuition waivers. There's a lot of money that's out there to support you in your educational journey. Um, so always encourage students to make sure um, that they do that. OK, and some other um sort of tips and, and tricks for transfer success, clear goals and, uh, and pathway. And, and obviously doing that research is important. And what do I mean by that about clear goals? Well, if you're looking particularly to transfer in two years, um, it's good to have a good idea of, of, your, of your final destination. Um, yes, you can come and start at a community college and maybe take core classes that first semester or so that are gonna meet transfer requirements to you know the UC or the CSU system. But within your second or third semester, you are going to need to start taking specific classes to support transfer to a specific school in a specific subject. And um, so can you change your mind? Absolutely. Can you start and then, you know, uh, go in a different direction? Always, you know, always an option. Um, but be aware that that may either delay transfer or may just require to take extra units and things of that. Um, this website, um, and I will just quickly click on it because it is quite useful and it's something our college counsellors will use. Um, it's called assist.org. Um, this is something that shows articulation. Um, let me just see if it's shared properly. I think I might need to put it over there. Hopefully you can see it, guys. Um, OK, so this is a this is a website that actually our college counselors will use. Um, obviously, it looks it looks quite busy, but the key thing I'm showing you right now is in the center. You can actually look at majors right now. So let me just type in Sierra College. Um, just and you could put in any community college. Obviously, I'm just choosing the one that, that, that I work at. Oh, they didn't like me. I didn't select it. OK, and then I can go down on this page if it will let me. OK and then go to the institution. So let me just choose Sac State because that's obviously just a local um, four-year school in our region. And then if I click on the view agreements, it's going to now list all the majors, uh, this, 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 all the majors down on the left-hand side. So if I go down on this side and I find my own personal favorite, um, which is history, uh, it'll show me what classes I need to take in history at Sierra College, and I can click on this blue button, view agreement. It'll give me a ton of information on this screen, but I can scroll down and it'll show me what classes on the right-hand side are Sierra College classes, and the classes on the left-hand side are the classes that meet the, the, the CSU requirements at Sac State for this major. And so that's an idea and starts me knowing what classes do I need to be taking to meet that particular major. So that's for history, but let me show you another one that's a little bit different, not to scare anybody, but like, let's just choose like, say, civil engineering. Um, click on that, choose civil engineering, view agreement. And it's a slightly longer list of required classes um, that you're going to need to take. Lots of chemistry, lots of math, lots of calculus. On the left hand side is all the classes that it matches on at Sac State. On the right are the equivalent Sierra College classes. So this is something that a, a student can start looking at in conjunction with a college counselor. So full public health warning. This is something that changes on a regular basis. It changes every year. This is something our college counsellors will use, but definitely make that something that you can take advantage of as well. Anyway, so I just want to show you that website and that's something um, that you can that you can use. Uh, Rachel, a question, I believe. Hi, yes, I'm one of the counsellors for Sequoia Grove. I was just going to, uh, you might have already closed that page, but I just was going to point out another thing on assist.org for students, because we have a lot of students that take classes at several different community colleges. So when you're in some of those majors, the ones that have like the black solid boxes around them that are like a, a course series. So like 
chem, you know, 4A and 4B or Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3. Sometimes um, certain colleges like those to be taken at the same college. So if you're looking at those classes and you're going to piecemeal them together, just be aware that anything that has like a solid black line box around it, a lot of times colleges like you to, like those classes to be taken at the same college. So just kind of food for thought for if they're looking at things yeah no great point and also like i get, I get into trouble because i'm actually not a i'm not a community college counselor so my i feel i feel my community college counselor friends on my shoulders so that's why i've got point three which is you work work with a community college counselor in conjunction because this is a great website and you can actually go down a bit of a rabbit hole because you can choose all sorts of ucs and csus and majors and everything else and it'll give you all that information just like you you pointed out there rachel and um, but it's important to be working with a counselor in conjunction with that and um, to exactly make sure you that you're on the right path um, and then um, just on this, and obviously, as I mentioned earlier, yes, there are certain core GE requirements that meet transfers, you know, to, to different majors and different um, uh, systems, whether it's the UC or the CSU, but you really do need to decide at the beginning of your sophomore year, if you're wanting to transfer in two years, that your major and your and your um, and your system, um, because that's when you're going to have to start doing that major prep and making sure that you make the right make, make, get the classes for the for the right um, for the right requirements. Obviously, already mentioned enrolling full time, and then there are right now, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Right now, there are certain GE patterns for the CSU system and for the UC. So you just need to make sure that you're following the right pattern. There are core classes that can meet both requirements, um, and actually, that's something that's that's going to be updated and I'll touch on that in a minute. And then finally, always reach out to the four years. So whatever community college you go to, you're going to find that there's going to be often UCs and CSU reps visiting those campuses on a regular basis, providing students with the most up-to-date information and also make sure you're checking in um, with um, your community college counsellor. Um, just a couple more slides um, to finish out here. I want to just um, obviously highlight the fact that um, and I mentioned this at the beginning, the community college system is designed as a way into both the CSUs and the UCs. And to stress that and to show how important that is, um, something that you'll hear probably a lot in the in the coming years is how many graduates from these schools started at a community college, somewhere like Sierra or Yuba or, or wherever it may be, within the CSU system every year, over half their graduates are community college students that started at a community college. So it's a pretty extensive pathway. For the UC system, it's not as high as that, but it's between 20 to 25% of all the students that graduate from the UC system started at a community college. Um, so those options exist. And um, having said that, and, I talked, and I've talked a lot about the UCs and the CSUs today, we do have students as well from community colleges that will go to out of state schools and that will go to private schools within California. And obviously, most of those schools have particular policies on community college transfer. So they may not have a policy on Sierra College transfer or Folsom Lake or or Yuba, but they will be aware of the credits that they'll accept for um, a community college student that attends somewhere in California, just because we're such a big system. So we have students at Sierra that go to UNR, University of Nevada in Reno is popular. We have students that will go to Arizona to Oregon and it, it's the same for um, um, other community colleges their students not just going to these schools but also transferring um, to other schools something that's changing and I'm just going to touch on it very briefly because you may have heard about this um, there is soon to be a single pathway for general education for students whether they're going into the UC or the CSU system it's called CalGetSE so it's that's sort of like acronym that's like the C-A-G-E-T-C, which means California General Education Transfer Curriculum. It's something that was adopted by the, the system in 2023, 20, so earlier this year, and it's scheduled to go into effect in the fall of 2025. The idea behind it is to simplify transfer as much as possible in terms of core GE requirements that students are required to do, regardless of whether they're going to a UC or whether they're going to a CSU. Um, it's supposed to increase enrollment um, and, and make that pathway smoother. Students are still going to need to do their major prep, depending on their, their location and, and um, the degree that they're going to be taking but this is something that you'll probably be hearing more about in the future and then finally i put together just some resources um, for students these are just um, websites and um, that students might want to take advantage of so say you're thinking hey alistair i'd like to apply to a community college how does that work this general community college link that's here this cc um 
CCC apply that general link you can just type in the community college of your choice so let me just choose Sierra College completely at random click on that <laughs> and it takes you in to the application for Sierra College say so that's not where you want to go just pick another community college so let me just choose our friends um, in Folsom choose Folsom College comes up there Click on that. Very similar look and design, but you create an account for Folsom College. So that's the statewide community college application that students um, can do. So that's a good resource um, for folks to take advantage of there. Um, if you want to know more about community college transfer, um, this link here talks a little bit more about the associate degrees for transfer that I mentioned in the earlier part of my presentation. And then you can search down by the major that you're interested in, the community college you're thinking of attending, and it'll show the transfer degrees um, that are available. So that's a good resource um, for folks. The CSU application is there. Um, transfer requirements for the UC. So I'll just click on this one just quickly. Um, the other one that I put together, just providing more information about what those transfer requirements are if you're looking to head to a UC. And then the other thing that I mentioned is the TAP, which is the transfer admission planner that any student can start, regardless of whether they've done their 30 units. Um, they can create an account and start putting in the classes that they've taken or are going to take. And this is something our counselors recommend UC bound students start as soon as they enroll at a community college. So that's another, another great resource. And then finally, just a couple of other things. Um, the tag matrix, that's something that gets updated every year. I've sent you a link there that shows you GPA requirements, impacted majors, uh, majors that are excluded from the tag, and then links to the impacted majors, and then more information about the associate's degree for transfer. Okay, guys, so that was a fun whistle stop tour and um, through the, the transfer process, the UC, the CSUs. Um, my contact details are here as well. Um, that's my direct telephone number and then email is a good way of getting hold of me. And then I've provided just our general outreach number here um, at Sierra College. Um, but I appreciate your time and attention this afternoon. Hopefully it was useful. As I said, if you've got any questions about those different pathways, um, but whatever you decide to do, um, community college makes a lot of sense for a lot of students, as I mentioned at the beginning, in terms of pathways and, and the support that you can get. And as always, work with your community college counselor. They're there to help guide you. You're not on your own. This can be can seem like an overwhelming process at times in terms of the requirements and the majors and the schools, but there's a lots of support and guidance for you at a community college. And I'm speaking not just at Sierra, I've worked with numerous other community colleges um, in the region and they've they're all there to help and guide you uh, as much as possible okay thanks guys and Alistair I've got one thank you so much I mean this was perfect I think this was exactly what I had envisioned your presentation would uh, touch on and I appreciate it so much because I think this is going to apply to a lot of our students I did have one question come in through the chat about the um the the new Cal Getsy. and we have a student who was like is this going to be the same as the iGetsy? So, yeah, so a little bit, and it's it's basically replacing it. So the iGetC was something that the the UC system primarily used, and then the UC, uh, sorry, the CSU system used like GE breadth um, as as well. So this is kind of merging it so that students take exactly the same GE whether they're going to a CSU or a UC. Um, so yes, it, that's the idea, and it's it's for transfer students. Um, so it's gonna. Whereas before, a student would sort of like have to, there's certain classes they can take that meet the requirements for both because they're very similar. The GE patterns are very similar. But yes, the short answer is it is. Yeah. All right. I'm going to pause for just a second. I'm going to um, share my screen that just shows you are, are upcoming that next week we're going to be talking about soft skills. And I have uh, put the link into the chat for our exit ticket. But I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to thank you. Um, officially and then i'm going to stop recording and we can take any questions if students want to raise their hand and ask some questions so um thank you alistair but hold tight and hope to see all of you next week let me stop recording <laughs>